Okay, so now's our first opportunity to really see the tail end of this J10 four-cylinder diesel that came out of this 1974 series. And if we just do a quick precursory look, we notice that we've got, you know, the starter over here. We've, of course, got the clutch and everything, but uh, one, two, three across the top, four, five, six down the side, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. <clears throat> got that in mind's eye. Now we come over here and we get a chance to see, of course, we've got our starter on the side, one, two, three across the top. The stud pattern is different. And so what we'll be doing is making a template to determine um, where I need to bore out a location for a new stud. And it looks like possibly even <clears throat> then remove or, or drill a location for these into the bell housing. But uh, good news is, is that, you know, most of what we've got is in really good shape. Now, here's where the big question becomes, what we're gonna do next. Um, if I change nothing else in this truck, the Steve Parker 300 TDI modification tells you that you're gonna use one of the motor mounts and it would clearly be this one, which is far more conventional looking compared to the one way it sticks out. So first and foremost, what I'm gonna do is now that I've got all the room to work, I pulled the engine out before we pulled the tray for the battery and air filter out. But what we're gonna do right now is go ahead and cut out these pieces and get all of this, that motor mount and all of this to come out as a single unit, set it to the side, <clears throat> and then start making measurements. We'll make a cardboard template to try to figure out exactly where stud holes are supposed to be, and that won't be too bad because we'll just lay a piece of cardboard in there, scribe around it, and then mark where the holes are, drill those holes out, and then go over and compare it to the 300 TDI and see just exactly what we need to do. We'll also find out where I've got locations for where studs are supposed to be for alignment, and we'll make some decisions there. So we're we'll working on that next. Okay, so we've pulled the uh, battery tray and the air filter holder out, and I've just got to disconnect this uh, <clears throat> air horn uh, aftermarket and the clip here for the wire so I can get that off the, the wing. But it uh, gives you an idea of how much more room we have to work with. Uh, because of the brake lines, I've slowed just a moment here. Just I'm going to pull those two clips off to get the brake line out of the way, and then I'll cut off that motor mount. And again, I'm going to leave <clears throat> that motor mount in place. What I think I'll do then after that is that I'm gonna push this out into the driveway and give it a real good, heavy, thorough cleaning. Uh, at that point, we'll know we've gone as far as we can in the speculative and some serious measurements will begin to happen with regards to engine fit, what will go where, uh, et cetera, <clears throat> in this project. So that's where we're at and that's what we're gonna do next. Uh, you may have better luck than me when it comes to getting your downpipe off of your exhaust. Um, mine was, uh, four bolts were frozen on so poorly that I just went ahead and made as clean of a cut as I could. I know it's at a slight angle, but I can, if I need to, I can weld that back on. If it turns out, I want to save this uh, exhaust system. And I'll take some time to do the rest a little more carefully, but um, it just was kind of where we were at yesterday. And it's where we're going to say that's the best we could do. But anyway, um, other than that, we're just going to tidy some things up here, get it nice and clean. And uh, like I say, we'll move that motor mount out of the way before we push this back into the drive to clean and then make our actual plan of how we go okay. forward. Okay, well, while we were at it, we went ahead and cleaned up inside the engine bay, exposed that the bulkhead originally was bronze green, as was the right-hand wing. The right-hand wing eventually got uh, royal navy blue and then the finishing black paint job that is coming off. They also had painted over the um, galvanized trim, which in some cases looks really good. I think when you have a light colored pastel green body, a dark color frame and a dark color stripe looks really, really sharp, but um, not on the dark colors. I think the galvanized looks good. But uh, anyway, uh, I went ahead and used the pressure washer to clean up the back corner fitting pieces and just polish up where I'd already ground with the um, grinding sanding disc on the galvy. Now I've cleaned this up a little bit more so we can see that. On this fender we have got the uh, marine blue, the royal navy blue, and then the black that was done after that. Just to round out all the colors, uh, Arl's blue is another blue that was made, an aircraft blue which is very similar to the, the uh, darker blue here. 
So, um, and again, this might just be somebody who picked it up and painted it on their own and didn't really care what they were doing. But anyway, uh, we're a lot cleaner here. And this is where we're going to start getting serious about what we do next. Um, I left the left-hand drive motor mount in place. And what we'll end up doing is the rubber pieces for the motor mounts that I have, we'll go ahead and get those affixed on this side. And then we'll attach the motor mount to the 300 TDI. And then we'll just kind of start to get this in here and we'll probably hang it and do like a three three inch forward measurement or something. In other words, when I know I'm three inches forward of the bell housing, I'll know that I am three inches forward of where that needs to be. I could just made it all up, but I think what I have to do is figure out exactly where I want that um, motor mount to be. I don't remember if they were in the exact same location, so I'll do some measuring and maybe I'll figure that out. But anyways, I've got the engine. I'll probably just swing it in and drop it and we'll go that route. I'm gonna have to grind this down and get that nice and flat. And uh, I highly recommend that if you're gonna be in here, of course, I was trying really hard to not disturb the brake lines. I went ahead and pulled the clips, but I did nick. <laughs> Sad thing was it wasn't even with the saw, but I did nick uh, one of the brake lines. So I have a non-contained uh, um, uh, system now for the brake lines. And so I'll have to uh, run a new brake line up to whichever side I determine is where the leak is. I gotta look again. I think it's right here. But um, the battery tray is out and the AC, I'm sorry, uh, the uh, air filter is out. Remember, don't, don't, don't make the mistake of like setting your air filter on the, tr the tray and putting it aside unless it's going to be really stable because I still have oil in that and haven't uh, drained that. And of course, that will get you a mess to clean up later. So now it's really kind of just buffing and prep time. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and get this engine squared away. This will... This old uh, four-cylinder diesel that the truck had. We're going to go to a newer four-cylinder diesel, but one that has the turbo and gets up and go a little bit better. And um, you know, technically right now, this even has an overdrive still attached to it. So I'm going to have some gearing capabilities that I just didn't have. And um, all of that, the intention is I won't need all that. But for now, again, um, we're just kind of exploring this project as we go. Uh, I haven't really done it this way without a master plan before. And I have to say, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it and you're just having to put up with me figuring it out as I go. Okay, so one of the first things that you'll notice if you take a measurement from uh, a given point on your bell housing to the motor mount is that it's about twice the distance of the 300 TDI's motor mount and back to the same position on the bell housing. So, what's going on well there's actually a need to go ahead and pull the motor mount off of the four-cylinder diesel that you're pulling out and I believe what's going to end up happening is that we're going to mount that to the forward motor mount position on the engine so we'll give that an experiment and see if the measurements work out okay so we're chasing the flywheel housing specifically because we need the configuration of the flywheel housing and frankly that flywheel and this clutch are going to be considered because the splines on the transmission are as such so our clutch I'm just immediately just taking and putting the 300 TDI in and only having to worry about maybe drilling some different holes for uh, studs not not so much so what we've done here is we've gone ahead and we are separating the flywheel housing away to get it out. We'll then head over to that engine and we're gonna swap flywheel housings. And then in the process of doing that, we will then get at least the uh, proper clutch in play. And of course, I have to make sure that we pay attention to the number of teeth and the starter and everything that we have on this before we go any deeper than that. But Next step is to go after the flywheel housing, which we're doing now. The flywheel has to be removed in order to get to those six uh, bolts right there. And then once you've done that, the flywheel housing comes out. So we're going to go over to that one, take the clutch off, take the flywheel off, take the housing off, and then study where we're at. Okay, well, after some thinking on exactly how I want to do the next step, uh, I've made a decision on what we're going to do. And it has a lot to do with the meeting of the flywheel housing for the 300 TDI to the... Um, bell housing of the LT76 or the Series 3 uh, transmission. So this standard bell housing that we do have uh, basically tells us where I've got some bolt holes. And what I've done is I've taken the flywheel housing or exactly where those bolt holes are and I've made a template. 
And when I take this template, and of course, the first part you do is you just put a little bit of grease or marker on the end of those and just set it on there and pick it up very carefully and you know exactly where your holes are. Then you bring in your flywheel housing from the 300 TDI. And in this case, what you're gonna see right out of the gates is maybe a couple of things, is I've got some studs that are not in place. I've also removed the um, <clears throat> studs, the uh, alignment studs, because those actually have no business being in that bell housing. There's just no way for them to go in. So I fold those out and set them aside. They will not be going into the project. Now what I've done here is each of these lines up exactly I don't know if I followed my finger there. Each of these lines up exactly with the bolt pattern of the transmission and the bell housing that's or the bell housing that's still in the truck. These do not. And this one here I've set in place. This is going to be the one that I go ahead and mark into my template so that I can then take my template over to the bell housing and drill out the hole that I need. I'm doing it that way for a couple of reasons. One, I don't have the proper um, tap in my in my tap and die set for the um, metric that I need. And since this is a little bit more precision on this side with regards to drilling and getting the threads good to go, it's just so much easier to mark where the hole needs to be in the bell housing and drill through that. And that's far less precision. That's a hole where the bolt has to go through and the nut's gonna keep it on tight. And we're gonna forego these here and this one here. And Give you give you an interesting story here. When we took the 300 TDI apart and and broke down the transmission and engine out of the truck that we the donor truck that we got this from, the entire top of all of the nuts were missing. So right up until a minute ago, you were judging me. Well, I can't even tell you how far I drove after I bought this truck from the guy before me who had had the clutch redone, and the jack wad of a mechanic shop went to launch or something like that, replaced none of the nuts. Now, if you think that's a silly story, <laughs> there were only three, possibly four. I had to go buy all new ones. So not made up story. <clears throat> I've got what I need to finish this off. So I'm going to go with the okayness that this is plenty of strength for the uh, engine and the bell housing and the flywheel housing. And uh, we're all going to be good. And I actually have proof of concept of that because of the years of driving down the road with six or seven of the nuts completely missing off the studs. So anyway, there we are. Okay, well, I've got my template in place with some available uh, bolts that I had. And just because you don't see a bolt in every hole doesn't mean that there's gonna be one missing. Uh, it does mean that uh, I know exactly where I'm gonna drill my new hole and I'm gonna get going on that. <clears throat> and then what we'll do is we'll bring the flywheel housing over and we'll test fit it and make sure everything is gonna play nice and see what more we might have to do. But for now, I've got my template held in place and I know roughly where I need to drill out my bolt hole. Okay, so we've gotten everything prepared on this flywheel housing and we've drilled out our hole for our extra stud and we are coming up with the very See if you see what I see. Basically, look at the curvature here and what's in this location. So, <clears throat> the big moment of truth, obviously this is gonna foul the driveline and I've actually set this up in and it, it does hit on the driveline. There's no way that it will miss it. So, I'm sitting here thinking really, really carefully about um, what we're about to do and it appears very obvious to me that I'm going to have to cut this and I don't like the idea of that however strength wise I think we're gonna be okay I'll just be very careful with where I do cut it but that has to come off <clears throat> so portable bandsaw time that's got to come off and then we're gonna test fit our bell housing uh, to the flywheel. Uh, okay, so as we mentioned a moment ago, uh, not only are we concerned about the drive shaft, uh, we also recognize that the um, clearance for the uh, slave cylinder, excuse me, for the slave cylinder for the clutch 
is probably something that we don't want to have to find out the hard way. So I went ahead and just milled off both sides and got this nice and clean looking. This will be on the drive shaft side and this will be on the clutch side. So we went a little a little tighter here. I think we have plenty of room, but we're gonna test fit. And see All right, we well, that is satisfying, I have to say, after going back and forth a bit on which flywheel housing to use, you can clearly see that you, there's a very big difference in where the um, rear main seal and the flywheel mounts uh, into the back of the block. This flywheel housing off of the J10 four cylinder it just goes basically right around the um, flywheel mount and here you've got a very different almost cathedral <laughs> cut so uh, the great news is <clears throat> I'm in and and it's uh, just fitting really really nicely all of the planning has been good what this is gonna allow me to do is now to dry fit the engine so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and um, get <clears throat> Sorry, thinking out loud here. I'll go ahead and get uh, this off of the back. I'm not going to put the clutch in, which will make alignment and settling it down in so much easier for a one-man job. And as I then finally drop this in play, I'll start to see issues such as, will the alternator foul with the chassis, like I've heard? Will I have to move the alternator where my air conditioning pump is, which I don't want to do because we're trying to put an air conditioning system in this. But anyway, um, for what it's worth, um, we slowed down a little bit yesterday to get this right, and I'm very pleased with the changes we just made, the clearance that we now have for the slave cylinder and for the drive shaft. And it even shows me that if I want to, when the time comes to get this all finally ready to go and cleaned up, I might even mill that down a little bit more. I'm just getting low on sanding pads. So uh, for now, it's good, and I can do my dry fitting of my engine which is awesome. Okay, so we talked about how the motor mount portion of the flywheel housing was gonna foul the driveline and the um, slave cylinder for the clutch. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off these ears. So basically, I'm gonna go ahead and just make a cut. It comes straight back very carefully so as not to conflict with my sump oil pan or anything like that. <clears throat> but uh, those got to go um, and then we'll determine with a dry fit where we're going to put the motor mounts. I'm going to leave them on the engine and then swing the engine into place, hopefully mount it all up and secure it with a couple of bolts just to get it hanging where I want it and in line with how I'd like it and from there we're sort of assessing the situation for motor mounts. Okay, so what we've done is we've removed the parts of the motor mount that go back and tied to the flywheel housing because they're not going to be part of this um, modification or conversion. And so we have just sipped them straight across here nice and clean on both sides. What I'm going to do is I've heard that if you retain the left-hand motor mount off of the original diesel that you're pulling out, I believe that can be relocated to this location, which is great because I've got that, I've got that. And when I'm hanging this in place, I might find out that that is exactly what that location is. And we'll make that decision at that point, whether we want to go that direction. However, for now, <clears throat> I'm leaving the motor mounts for the original 300 TDI in place on both sides because I have both of the motor mount bushings and I have saved Look very carefully at what I've got here with the the old clutches sitting on top of. I've got the old motor mount ears that I can cut off and re-weld onto the frame. So what we're going to do is we're just going to work here very carefully to get the engine slung into position. And uh, of course, we'll, we'll try to level it out and get a little more square before we go down with it. But um, the weight changed a little bit once with the uh, flywheel and flywheel housing came off the back. So might want to reset that. But anyway. It's time to now lower it down into place and